KSW 71 is here. Chris Hookstra and Christoph Soshinsky to give you the preview show today. It's happening this Saturday night at Torun, and you can catch all of the action from start to finish on kswtv.com and in selected regions on Viaplay. Well, Christoph, three weeks later, KSW 70 was highlight reels from start to finish, yet top to bottom on this card. It's nine intriguing matchups. What do you reckon? No, absolutely. I agree with you. Another stacked card with some interesting first-time twists for KSW. Should be a fun one. All right, we begin in the light heavyweight division. Mark Ducis is coming back. He came into KSW 7-0, but he lost that debut. He'll be looking for a win against Shemi Suave Zwonyarek. Debutant for Zwonyarek. Um, what do you make of this one? Yeah, for me, it's all about Ducis and how he comes back from that loss. You know, anyone who goes, you know, seven in a row and then loses a you know, really badly in that in that last matchup. It's all about that mindset for me about how he comes back from that. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what Dusis has in a store. And and you know, for Premiswav Junyadic, who's who's a newcomer to KSW, you know, he's coming in here to just showcase his skills. And usually, you know, when you fight for the first time in KSW, man, you just go out there, have fun and put on a show. And I'm sure he's gonna do that. Just perfect. Looking forward to it. At 155, lightweight, second fight of the night. A lot of eyes on this one. I know it's potentially your sleeper. Donovan Desme is back in the house, and he's taken on former yeah. champ Artur Silvinsky. Great to have him back in the promotion. Desme is coming off a truly spectacular submission finish, but Artur Silvinsky, 21-fight KSW veteran, and I believe fourth all-time as far as round time goes in the organization. This is a high-stakes fight. It's the second fight of the night, but I tell you what, the fans definitely don't want to miss this one, do they? No, absolutely, man. This is this got fireworks all over for me, man. Two very exciting, exciting fighters who like to go just toe to toe inside, just you know, angles, everything they got, uh, beautiful. And and for me with Sovinsky, who's you know a former KSW champ, had those two tough losses, moved on to somewhere else, came back now to KSW. I'm super excited. I'm sure he wants to get back into that, you know, that championship status where he had before. And and Desme, who's just fire. I mean, he's just looking to climb as close to that title contention as possible. Fireworks all over this one for me. And it's an important fight for two different reasons. You know, you've got a fighter coming in who is very established, who was a champion, and you've got a fighter who's got some fire behind him from that uh, that incredible highlight reel. The triangle finish, again, yeah. just blew my mind. Third fight of the night. It's the heavyweights. Yeah. Two debutants, <laughs> Philippe Stavove and Michal Martinek. Um, I'm not sure about this one. I've got a lot of questions about this one. And my question to you is this, Soshinsky. Yeah. I look at this, and I know... It's heavyweight. It could yeah. be heavyweight MMA. We might see a bit of a slugfest. We might somebody get gas, somebody get on top and cause catastrophe. Is it about that? Or is it maybe the mental game somewhere? Because again, you got both fighters who have a penchant for the finish coming and making yeah, yeah. a debut. Maybe confidence and performance is what matters most here. I'm going back to 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 kind of my career and stuff like that. And then once I got into that, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 fight range, which all these guys are, you know, just more than 10, you, you start focusing more on that skill set, more about the, the understanding of MMA, creating game plans. It's no longer about coming under swinging for the fences anymore. You want to establish yourself as a as a as a as a high-level professional fighter. So I don't think it's anymore with these guys about the swinging and the swing fast. And, and getting tired it's more about the game plan who's going who's going to do what to the other person and how are they going to go about doing it and i really wonder about this one because again we've got a great amount of talent in this division we've got so many new signings phil de is looking for challengers yeah, you know yeah. he had his eyes on the last ksw maybe even pujanovsky coming back and fighting for the title who knows right. yeah. one to watch out for a third fight of the night at heavyweight we move on <laughs> it's a return of a familiar face and a guy who has had no easy road. Roman Shemansky is taking on Valerio Mircha, a debutante as well. I don't know about this one either. I do know, though, for sure, Shemansky, a former featherweight and lightweight title challenger, has had no easy fights. It's been tricky matchup after tricky matchup. And Mircha is another tricky matchup. Um, both guys coming off wins. Shemansky's been in KSW since 2016. He's tremendously skilled, but is this fight potentially just a pressure cooker for both guys? 
Um, I, I don't know, man. Shemansky is one of those guys who's just taking on anybody. I don't know if it's KSW doing this to him or he's just asking him to, hey, give me the toughest guy you have. Because, I, man, he's fought everyone in that division, I mean, from top to bottom. And 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 he comes out of those, you know, whether it's a win or loss, he's always getting better and better and better, which I love. And now he's getting thrown against the number two, you know, ranked European fighter in the world, man. How much tougher can you get? So, I mean, the pressure is on Shemansky for sure. Um, but, man, what an intriguing matchup should be fireworks and definitely one of those that could be a pivotal matchup again we you know we spoke about it with the heavyweights we spoke about it with some of the others and Savinsky coming back people want titles there's a lot of former champions on this card well a former two division challenger taking on an incredible fighter in Valerio Mircha one to watch out for too at bantamweight this one is pretend you know you mentioned the fight you're most interested in in the second fight yeah, of the night still yours, right? <laughs> this is this is mine this is definitely mine at bantamweight we've got Jakob Vikwach taking on Bruno Santos yeah two top guys in this division period and there are some common opponents the fanboy in me wants to see him hit the ground we talk about the fights against Anton Rachich for both guys and the two fights for Jakob Vikwach against Sebastian Pscherbiz he's one and one is anybody more motivated here? Because both of these guys want vengeance. Um, you know, man, what a what a crazy matchup. Because for me, I don't know about you, which is that's going to be my question to you is like, do you think that that ratchet fight and the Shibish fights that they both had against each other have anything to do with this? Because for me, I think they do. You know, what I mean, when you when you're a fighter and you beat two guys that your opponent hasn't, I think that gives you a little bit of that mental edge. You know, and, and so for me, that's a, that's that's the big one for, for me in this fight is is that that hey man, I got the edge. I've beat these two guys. You've lost to these two guys. What do you think? I think so too. I think I look back at that loss uh, for Bruno Santos, submission of the year for me. I mean, it was one of the most spectacular yeah. performances. An inverted triangle that had to be demoralizing, especially when he's sure. hanging in that fight. Can he come back? Can he win? Can he get across Vikwash to get back to the title? On the flip side. I look at the fight where Vikwach beat Sherbij, and I think to myself, and I look at this, that was early in the career. And when Vikwach fought Sherbij again, before Sherbij now is one of the most dominant guys in KSW, maybe one of the most skilled, I don't know if that first fight matters. And I look at how badly he was beat in the second fight, yeah, yeah. but maybe that's motivating. And again, I look at this, there's a potential trilogy for him against Sherbij, and of course, Santos coming back. He's got to get back, and he is a skillful guy. Yeah, I love sure. this fight. Yeah, six fight of the night number six it's the one so many people are really curious about i know the two of us included at 105 yeah, kilos true. it's a catchweight fight and two former boxers wbo and wbc title challengers artur spilka will be taking on sergey redchenko 33 years old plays 35 does anything matter about their boxing fight is any of that history relevant here or is it a clean slate I think definitely there is, you know, I mean, with Radchenko, and I remember, you know, watching him on screen at K the last KSW, you know, I mean, I, I think that's going to play with him because he thought he won that boxing match. And, and when we look back at it, he dropped Spielko, Spielka, I mean, he, he, I thought he won that fight. Uh, I'm sure many fans as well did. And, and also on the other side is for me is what is Spielka's motivation? Is it, is it more about the money or is this actually something that he's looking at as a, as a real challenge? Uh, because he is taking on somebody who's actually has our MMA record two and one. So that's another one, right? Is, is Radichenko going to use his boxing or is he going to take him down? Like that's, that's, that's another one, right? And when you are developing your skills over the last little while in MMA, you're definitely gonna have a little bit more skills against someone who, you know, is brand new to the sport. So yeah, for me, it's those three key points. It'd be very interesting to see what, uh, what's in here for, for Spielka. What about I you? I agree. I agree. No, I completely agree because Spilka beat Rachenko in majority decision. It was a fight where people questioned that outcome. And you mentioned the highlight reels. He got knocked down. He was knocked down in that fight. And although he got the win, you cannot tell me that that does not play on your mind when you step into a new sport for you, even though you won the last one, a guy who has experience in the sport, question marks. Well, not long until we get the answer. Yeah, Saturday exactly. night, KSW 71. <laughs> Uh, a lot of intrigue about that and a very special contest. Now, the top three, it gets even spicier. Let's talk sure. about the lightweights. <laughs> Boris Mankowski taking on Daniel Torres. Two champions, two former champions, one at 155. Torres at 145, Mankowski at 155. They will fight at 155 in this one. It's another fight full of consequences in a card full of consequences. <laughs> <So> <laughs> How do you break this one down? 
man, both coming off a loss. And then I'll now get it. Now one of them is going to lose again. And then that's going to, you know, such a, such a crazy mindset when you're, when you're, when you're up here, you know, you're a former champ, you've, you've done all these things. And now all of a sudden you're one, one loss, two losses. It is such a mental mindset game, roller coaster ride of emotions and just, 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 it's, it's absolutely nuts. Like for me, uh, I look at this and I'm going, okay, you got to, uh, really, really solid wrestler who's all over the place versus nice, cool, composed BJJ guy, right? So for me, it's the clinch. Like, what's going to happen in that clinch game? Like, where is, is Torres is going to be okay to being on his back, right? Against against Monikowski, who's just a pit bull and a bull on top, right? So that's that's a that's a big question mark. Boris Monikowski is going to keep it standing because his hands are much faster and his angles are much better than, than, than Torres' is. So, you know, once again, I have those two points for me kind of playing out who's going to win this fight. What do you think? Two questions for you. This is what I think. Yeah. Two questions. Two quick questions for you here. My question to you is this. First, if Torres gets a win here and it's a dominant win, do you think he has his eyes on Zhukovsky, who's also fighting on the card? Uh, well, yeah, I, I would I would assume so. I would think either of those guys, like if you're, if you're, if you're both these guys and you win dominantly, wouldn't you want that next fight to be him? For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I mean, with, with Boris, what, what he was able to do in that fight and coming close and, and losing and then, you know, Torres, you know, being a former champion, and everything like that. Absolutely, man. That's my next step. When I'm with these guys and I'm at that level, I want the next biggest fight. I want the best fight. I want the next biggest fight because I, I don't want to fight anybody else but the champ. And how about Mankovsky? He'll be looking at that fight. He does want to go back to Zhukovsky. Sure. Given what happened in the last fight, you think he's got the skills to get the W against the champ? I think... I think he's got to get back into the gym and work on the stuff that that didn't go so well for him, which was obviously the hands, you know, catching the angles and things like that. Um, you know, Zhukovsky's takedown game got so much better. Um, so, so you know, he's got to get back into the gym and work on those things. But I definitely think he'll be ready for for another shot at the title if if, if he's got a dominating win in this fight. All right co-main event of the evening yes. it's a heavyweight Man. contest and it is to my knowledge in ksw the first time that we've ever paid two guys to wear four ounce gloves go three fives and stand and stand only <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> marching rosalski is taking on errol zimmerman marching rosalski former ksw heavyweight champ he is a fan favorite and a gigantic star but errol zimmerman is one of the most spectacular heavyweight kickboxers of I think the recent generation and definitely a flag holder for Dutch kickboxing full stop. Yeah. The guy's got an incredible career, wins over Rico Verhoeven, Jerome LeBonner, oh, Hesdi Gerges. I mean, the list goes on and 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 on. <laughs> I don't know what to think about this one. I think speed could be a factor. We both don't think this is going the distance. Yeah, no, this is a very tough one for me, man. Well, number one is like, I don't know many fighters in any sport as far as you know combat sports because i have a record of 100 wins plus you know what i mean earl zero has got to be up there on that on that list you know so so that's number one i mean man true true legend I mean, i've watched him in k1 way back when and and in Luja, i mean nine years ago we were we were doing a ksw camp uh show and i met him for the first time and i'm sitting there watching him get ready for training and he's got duct tape and, you know, he's taping his hands with duct tape. He's taping his other injuries with duct I've never seen, like, you know, like I'm, I've seen old school, but this was like, holy smokes, old school for me. And nine years later, you know, he's fighting on in the semi-main event of KSW 71, where I'm sitting on the sidelines, you know, commentating. And he's taking on freaking a legend in K1 kickboxing, man. And and for me too, it's it, like, it was heartbreaking to watch that Josh Barnett fight, that burn up fight he had. It was, it was really tough to watch. Um, and and I, I hope that, you know, his body is going to allow him to do what he is capable of doing because we've seen some amazing things from, from Rujal before. And it's just, is the body, can the body hold up? Because he's been through a lot worse, man. He's been, he's been a broken man. So for me, if his body does do what he's supposed to do, he's got a good chance of winning this fight, but it's, it's, it's all about that body. I agree. And if you look at their history, if you look at where these guys have yeah. been, we must consider where they're at now. But yeah. in their careers, in the win columns, it's all north of a 50% knockout ratio. I mean, there are so many memorable yeah. performances. Yeah. You know, Ruzalski knocking out Santo Forte in under 30 seconds at the Coliseum. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that will forever be there. And the guy has got to have a lot of momentum knowing that he's back in this organization, but he is facing a tough test. Yeah. Final question for you, Soshinsky. You agree with me that it's not going the full 15? Oh, absolutely. I, I you know, for late second, sorry, late first or early second, someone's going to sleep for sure. <laughs> All right. 
KSW 71 has a main event, and that main event is in the lightweight division. The return of the champ, Marian Zhukovsky, fresh off of defense in January 2022, will take on the challenger, who's on a three-fight run, Sebastian Ryevsky. I've got three questions for you about this fight. The first of them is this. Knowing the skills, does this one only stay standing up until a point? Mm, it can. It can. I do think that, I think you and I agree that, you know, Arayevsky is probably the first challenger in a while for Zhukovsky who has the same skill sets on the striking game, right? I mean, the both these guys are incredible strikers, a little different in styles, but I think this is the first time where which there's somebody that's going to challenge Zhukovsky in the striking game. And uh, I'm very intrigued by that. So if 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 Rayevsky does land some strikes, can Zhukovsky go for a takedown? Definitely think so. Is this a case where if Zhukovsky becomes too comfortable standing up, that could be a foolish decision? Because a lot of people have argued this guy's one of the most well-rounded fighters in KSW in any division. And I think nobody could argue that Rayevsky could change his fight with a three-punch combination or a high kick or some spinning technique, because the guy's got the full arsenal. Yeah. Is it a foolish decision, perhaps, for Zhukovsky to not think about everything in the bucket that he has, skills-wise? Um, I think so, yes, but I don't think he's. I don't think he's. I don't think he looks at it that way. I think at this level in this sport, um, when you're a champ, I think you look at all your options. I think you have a lot of different game plans. I think you have a game plan for hey, if I am winning this fight, I'm going to continue on with the game plan. If things go south, I have to have a plan B and plan C. And I am sure at this level, he's going to have a plan B and a plan C if he needs to pull it out of his pocket. Final question for you. Prediction yeah. time. The main event, oh. KSW 71 in Torun. Zhukovsky taking on Ryevsky. Shosinski, go. Shishek. Oh, man. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to take the, I mean, I'm going to take the upset. I, I know. I just, man, I'm so impressed with Ryevsky, the way he came back from that crazy flying knee. It was a flying knee? It was a flying knee knockout yeah. against Payich. Like, to me, that would have been, like, career ending. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things, just devastating and all that. And the way he came back and won his last three fights, just the role he's in, the way he's moving, whatever he did mentally to get prepped for that, I think he's got a really, really big chance in this fight. And I think someone is going to finally challenge Joukowsky with his hands and could be possibly trouble. I, it's going to be a very close fight, but I do think that Ayevsky can actually win this one. How about you, Chris? Where are you, where are you on this one? I'm going to go Zhukovsky. I'm going to go with the yeah. Zhukovsky knows how to win rounds formula. And I yeah, look yeah. at the type of performances. I think about the Shemansky fight, for example. I think about what he learned against Mateusz Gamra. Mm -hmm. And I think that guy has the kind of development as an athlete at this point in his career where the formula and skill set, the coaching, the peaking, everything he's kind of gotten down has put him in a place to win five fives or at least get the four or five and be meticulous. Um, I see a certain kind of cerebral focus from this kid and I know him personally. Yeah. I actually trained with him before he even became like a professional fighter That's way nice. back in the day in the UK. And to see that journey up until now, um, I'm impressed. I mean, I'm a huge Ryevsky fan. I'm going to throw that out yeah, there. I'm yeah. a huge fan of any of the Ryevsky brothers anytime, but I think this is a tough matchup. I believe Zhukovsky is the favorite. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an upset, but I'm picking Ooh. Zhukovsky. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> we'll find out very soon, won't we? <laughs> we will. We will. So yeah. for Chris Hookster, Christoph Soshinsky, that's the preview show. We'll be there on Saturday night. Looking forward to have you along for the ride. Again, kswtv.com and on Viaplay in selected regions. Once again, for Soshinsky and Hookstra, we'll see you then. Of course.